It's windy, so let's go inside. All right, we are going to do a $200 per month Walmart grocery haul. $50 a week. You're gonna see what you can do with keto, eating clean, shopping at Walmart. And honestly, you might be able to trim the fat a little bit more and get that price down even more. So let's head on in. Let's see what good clean items Walmart has because they are really turning a corner when it comes down to clean keto. Let's go. Okay, general rule of thumb, whenever you're budget shopping, we hit grocery, uh, we hit uh, meat first, okay? The reason I say that, and I say this all the time, is protein is the most important thing on keto. It is not just fats, okay? So I wanna go and I wanna pick out some good clean protein. We're not gonna be able to get the perfect organic stuff, I can already tell you that, but we will be able to make some cleaner choices. Ooh, let's check out eggs, okay? So normally with eggs, you wanna get pasture raised. That's usually the route that you wanna go. Uh, unfortunately, we may not be able to find that here. So let's see, we've got cage-free large. In this case, I'd rather go organic cage-free. Not gonna be the best, but we've got, yes, $3.62, so that's pretty darn good. So in this case, again, pasture-raised is usually what you'd want. I'm gonna go for two things of eggs. That's gonna put me at a little over $7 but I've got a good amount of protein right there, okay? Because you're only gonna need to have like three eggs for a dish. And, okay, hot dog, sausage, things like this. Doing clean keto, probably gonna skip out on those. Bacon is absolutely still good to go on keto. Let's just see what kind we have here. We have natural choice, original uncured, no preservatives. Pork, water, salt, turbinado sugar. That's a really clean bacon. The downside is it's five bucks and we're only getting Oh, probably a few slices really. So you're not gonna get much value out of this. So let's look at like a cheaper bacon. We have to be a little bit careful with some of the smoked meats, but with bacon, it doesn't matter quite as much. Um, that's not that much of a better price. So it's kind of funny, 4.98, okay, 31.2 cents per ounce. It's a little bit cheaper, but comparatively what you're getting, water, salt, sugar, sodium phosphate, sodium erythrobate, sodium nitrate. So nitrite. So we don't really want the sodium phosphate. Okay, that draws water to make sure that this is basically staying fresh, but it has negative effects within our body if we have too much of it. So I wanna pass on that one. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm a big fan of bacon. I am gonna get the Hormel Natural Choice. It's not amazing. Uh, I might, I'm gonna put it, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put this top section as a potential put back. If I end up going over my budget, then I will put things from this category back. Okay, so that's gonna go in the potential go back if we go over budget. Uh, most of the deli meat here at Walmart is not the kind of deli meat you wanna be leaning into. So even the stuff that says like natural, um, you know, natural choice, even from Hormel, we still have turkey breast meat, water, salt, potato starch, turbinado sugar, rice starch, carrageenan. Uh, at least this carrageenan is derived from seaweed. Okay, if it's carrageenan that is not derived from seaweed, it can be a big problem baking soda, cultured celery powder, which is basically a natural nitrite, uh, cherry powder. It's not as bad as I would have thought, but you're not getting much value as far as protein is concerned. So unless it's something that you really wanna eat a lot of, I don't think it's the best bet. It's not where you should be leaning into your protein unless maybe you're on the go. Uh, cottage cheese, however, let's see if the, I doubt they have an organic cottage cheese. Yeah, we'll probably have to lean more into yogurt on this. Oh, this is cool though. I don't see the price anywhere because it was just kind of thrown here. But these are kind of like those folios. But if you wanted to make like a sandwich or kind of a, a wrap out of this, it's actually pretty cool. Check it, that's a cool find. Uh, see if we can find where it is. It doesn't look like that's the right thing. Hmm, I am gonna get it though, because that's really cool. If it is that price, then great. But I'm gonna put it again as the potential go back. Sour cream is good to go on keto, okay? In fact, I like it because it actually has some cultures in it. It's actually pretty good. Um, so if you're just looking to add a little bit of extra fat calories, but you're also trying to get a little bit of probiotics, if you just add a little bit of sour cream, that's a perfect dish. It's a perfect thing to add to chicken, anything like that. And it's so inexpensive. I'm a big fan of this. You know, Daisy is probably going to be the best one here. Um, as far as price goes, I don't think I need a giant one, but bang for the buck, 12 cents, per, uh, 12 cents per ounce, that's pretty awesome. So I'm gonna go for that one. 
I don't want to get ahead of myself. I want to make sure I get the proteins first. So let's go through and do that. And then we'll come back to the cheeses and everything like that. The thing I like about Walmart a lot of times is they will have their meat department, but then they will also have their frozen meat right next to it. So you can kind of compare value. So I think if you're doing a budget keto haul, you really should be leaning into the frozen, at least beef, okay? Because the frozen meat is a lot of times just as good a quality. It just gets thrown under the bus. So look at this, 100% Angus beef burgers, $8.94 for six patties. That's pretty good. Um, I think we can do a little bit better. Don't worry about getting the fancy stuff, the mushroom burger stuff. Um, this one's probably garbage. It's the Sam's Choice, 100% Angus beef. It's not gonna be grass-fed. We have 3.87 per pound, okay, versus 4.47 per pound. So this is clearly gonna be a bigger bang for the buck. So for 15 bucks, I get 12 burgers. Okay, that's gonna get me halfway through a month, right then and there, okay? So if I, just in terms of if I were to have one patty a day, so let's do this. Now we can have one patty a day for the entire month. And I just spent 30 bucks. I know it's a lot of my budget, okay? I know it is, but the bulk of our budget, I would like it to come from good quality protein, okay? Oh, I just found these. Okay, so $4.28, that's a little steep. I'm gonna pass on that. You're paying a premium because it's in a nice little roll, but that's still fine. I call that a cool Walmart find. It's just not gonna fit the budget today. Okay, these Ginio turkeys, turkey burgers here. We have white turkey, uh, less than 2%. So fun fact, they'll use rosemary extract to actually have an antibiotic effect. So it's a plus. When you see rosemary extract, they make it sound like it's kind of this herb cool thing, but really it's just kind of an antiseptic, <laughs> kind of an antibacterial, okay? But that's a good thing in this case. Salt, seasoning, spice and black pepper, dehydrated garlic. These are really clean. And $7 for six patties. Okay, I am absolutely gonna get this. You can put these in the oven. You can just put them on a cast iron. If you put them in a cast iron with a little bit of ghee or a little bit of coconut oil, they taste so good, okay? Now, turkey is not gonna be my first choice. It's usually not. But again, we are on a super budget, no excuses here. I want you to be able to you know, do whatever you can. If you have to use that $600 stimulus check that you got and you gotta be on a budget, then I mean, this is what we're talking about right now. Quick time for me to explain Usually with poultry, I go for the lean meat whenever I can, the lean poultry. So in this case, like the chicken wings and stuff like that, although it's tempting because they probably taste good and the price is good, um, the fat that's gonna be in poultry is usually not as good. So I usually try to lean into lean meat. Ha ha, get that? Dad joke, lean into lean meat. So the poultry, I will probably go with lean chicken. Now this is a cool find. Hey, here we go. If you have, now I'm gonna tell you right here, this is not gonna be organic chicken, okay? But I love ground chicken for ease. Okay, I am human. You can just say whatever you want in the comment section about the fact that this isn't gonna be super clean, perfect chicken, right? Convenience is a thing. I'm a busy dad, you're busy, I get it. I don't have time to fillet open all kinds of meats and cut chicken all the time. I love ground meat, but I love ground chicken more than ground turkey, because chicken is cleaner, especially when it's 96% lean. That is a really, really cool thing, okay? It's a great find because that's already lean and when you cook it, it's gonna be 99% lean, which means you're getting the lean, lean chicken that we want. And that price, 387 per pound, that's like the same price that we were paying for this beef patties. So with this, I would stock up on this. So this is probably gonna be, this is a pound. So in a perfect world, this would probably yield me three meals, okay? You know, just about like that, say. So three meals, six meals, nine meals, 12 meals from chicken. So let's do a quick breakdown here, okay? I have, if you're fasting some days, let's say on average you're gonna have 30 times three, 90 total meals, but you're fasting sometimes. So let's just say you have maybe 75 total meals, okay? And here we have 12 meals, 24 meals, Okay, we have 30 meals, because those are six patties. Okay, then we have 33, 36, 39, 42 meals already. Okay, I need to figure out 30 more meals with my meat 
but then don't forget I have eggs, okay? So 12, so we have four meals here, three eggs, okay? So that's going to be 44, 48, 48 meals. Wait, I'm sorry, was I? Let me make sure I do my math right, sorry. <laughs> Editing note, I might have screwed up my math. Okay, 24, 30, 33, 36, 39, 42. Okay, sorry. Okay, so now if we go with the, with the eggs here, we have four meals in each pack and we're already at 42 meals. So we have 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. Okay, I only need 25 more meals as far as my protein's concerned and I still have plenty of budget. Okay, so I've got, let's just round up, $4, $12, $4, $8, $12, $16. Okay, and then we have $30 here total. Okay, so we're at $56. And then I have these guys here, which were I think seven bucks. Okay, so we've got, man, we're still like around the $50 ballpark, give or take, with just our protein. And now there's some other things that we can still get. What about chicken breasts, right? We still wanna have some chicken breasts. Let's see if we can, we're not gonna find quality organic, but let's see what we can find here. This market side butcher might be kind of nice. Let's see, no antibiotics ever, that's good. Except the thing with chicken is they're usually not given antibiotics anyway. Uh, all vegetarian diet is not necessarily what you want. Okay, that usually leaves them uh, devoid of some nutrients here. Never fed animal byproducts, who cares about that? Raised cage free, that doesn't mean anything. So not, you might be paying a premium for something that really doesn't matter. At the end of the day, this is probably the same as this. Yeah, it really is. I mean, you're paying more because it's green and it has, it's just funny because no chickens aren't usually given a lot of antibiotics, okay? That's usually not in the game. So it's marketing propaganda. So in this case, I can get some chicken breasts, put this guy back because why pay 446 per pound when there's nothing that truly argues that that's better? I'm not saying that you shouldn't go for higher quality chicken, but if you're gonna go for higher quality chicken, you should be able to prove that it's higher quality, not just because it has a green label, okay? Yellow is cool too. Um, these are definitely like inflated with uh, some stuff, let's see. Yeah, okay, so 10 bucks and I'm gonna get, I mean, at least, at least one, two, three, four, five, six, probably more like eight meals if I were to actually weigh this out. What I usually do with my prep is I'll cook a bunch of this and then I'll cut it into strips so that I can actually get myself like four to six ounces. Because this is, these are big breasts. These would be like eight, 10 ounce breasts. And that's not as much meat as you really need, okay? So anyway, look at this. We are almost set with our meals. Now I'm gonna go grab some yogurt, come on. Now, if you wanted to swap out um, some of your beef patties that you got in the frozen sense, you could get some fresh beef. Now, let me tell you really quick. Beyond Burger, impossible. Let me explain why I'm not a fan of this stuff, okay? Say what you want about it, but what I don't like is the sec or second ingredient, or third ingredient, sorry, expeller pressed canola oil, then refined coconut oil, rice protein, natural flavors. I mean, this is the most unnatural thing as far as that's concerned. I understand why people want to have it for sustainability. I get it, I'm all for that. But expeller pressed canola oil, you're basically ingesting a pure 36 grams of fat from a vegetable oil plus refined coconut oil. Any negative study that you can find in the world of coconut oil is only because it's coming from refined. You're losing all the antibacterial components of it. Impossible, it's good that we get a chance to compare Beyond Burger and Impossible for a second. Very, very similar, except I would say Impossible slightly better. Okay, water, soy protein is the bummer, but at least the fats they're using are coconut oil and sunflower oil versus uh, that garbage. The other issue is methyl cellulose, yeast extract. There's a, a lot of stuff in it. So fatty acid profile, impossible is better. It's preservatives beyond is better. So if you're choosing between the two, that's the trade-off, right? Now, let's forget about that stuff for a minute and get back to beef. We don't, I don't really see any grass fed here. I think this is just flavored, yeah. All natural, let's see. Minimally processed, see it doesn't mean anything. But I always, again, try to go for leaner beef if I can. Um, 524, so if you wanted to get maybe one of these for $5, that way you can, um, 
you at least make spaghetti one night, you know, with some spaghetti squash or something like that, that might make it a little bit fun. Again, I'm gonna go for the lean one. So it's 524, I'll get two of those. So I'm probably somewhere in the ballpark of like 70-ish dollars right now. I'm a fan of having one, one meal-ish every other day or so with yogurt. Um, it's a good source of protein. Greek yogurt is totally keto friendly if you get the unsweetened stuff. And the small amount of carbs that are in there, I largely think get offsetted by the fact that there's a strong probiotic effect. If we can bring those probiotics in, those different cultures in, that supports what are called short chain fatty acids within our gut, which send a signal to our brain to help us produce more ketones and to help us ultimately handle glucose and handle fats better. So there is an argument that the couple grams of carbs you get out of these are going to be worth it. So then the question comes, which one? I always try to lean into organic dairy whenever possible, but I understand we don't have those options per se. Um, so Chobani, 468 for, let's say we've got six grams of carbs and let's compare that to Faya. I used to call it phage for so long. It's technically Faya, um, five grams. Let's see, we've got six live and active cultures. So this one has uh, Bulgaricus, Thermophilus, Acidophilus, Bifidus, and Casey. This has Thermophilus, Bulgaricus, Acidophilus, Bifidus, Bifidus, Casey, and, oh, okay, fun fact, nerd alert. L-Rhamnosus is one of the most studied probiotics that's out there. And a lot of the good peer-reviewed science out there is surrounding L-Rhamnosus. So that's interesting to find. It probably wasn't naturally occurring. They probably added it in there. So there's some interesting studies that dem uh, demonstrate like all kinds of different not just digestive effects, but l rhamnosis seems to have powerful effects in terms of mood. Okay, there are some studies out there that showed that people that were dealing with um, anxiousness and stuff like that, l rhamnosis actually helped them with that. So in this case, I dig yogurt. Uh, this is going to be five servings and you're gonna get 16 grams of protein. So I would probably make it more like four servings because I'd like you to be closer to 20 grams of protein in a meal at least. Um, so let's get two of these. Sure, you can get all kinds of different cheese over in that other section. But if you're on a budget, you can still make good choices with cheese here. So let's see, in, in Walmarts, you'll have the regular cheese aisle, and then you'll usually have what's called a cheese island that's usually in their produce section or close to it. This is where you're gonna find the cheeses that are a little bit higher quality. So I wanna look for goat cheese, okay? The most ketogenic cheese that there is. Let's see what Walmart has. What's this? Australian extra sharp cheddar. seeing if anything oh yeah see look at this old crock extra sharp grass-fed cows that's really good stuff love to get that cheese if i can i just don't see a price anywhere okay. hmm i don't know if that is the case that says it's 324 which is a great price so i'm going to get it but i'm going to put it in the possible go back section because i don't know the price for sure Yeah, usually they have goat cheese. Ooh, check this out. Ooh, that's expensive though. So Grie is one of the best cheeses that you can get. Okay, so Grie, it's a uh, high altitude cheese, which means that you're generally gonna have more conjugated linoleic acid in it. Conjugated linoleic acid has some powerful effects within the body as far as, well, the studies demonstrate waist to hip ratio improvements, improved lipolysis, so improved fat burning, things like that. Uh, but this price is, it's a good taste, but I don't know if I can justify that. Um, what is this? Smoked. So with Gouda, Gouda is good stuff, but I don't necessarily want to have it smoked because sometimes the smoke flavoring they add to it can be uh, kind of a carcinogen, but also just a cause in other issues. So we're probably going to pass on that. What's this though? Thousand day aged Gouda. Yes. This is what I'm getting. Okay, so it's five bucks, 93 cents per ounce. Okay, compare that to the Grie, which is $1.12 per ounce. So it's still expensive, but it's better. So I'm gonna get this, because this is a great cheese. I could add it to so many different things. Um, not a whole lot of options here. Don't have a lot of goat cheese that I'm seeing. 
unless I'm missing something. I'll pop over there in a second, but usually I want to lean towards like Parmesan, Pecorino Romano, goat cheese, Gouda, Grie, sometimes Swiss. Any high altitude cheese or grass fed cheese is great. Uh, as far as dressings go, I've talked about this in other videos before, but if you wanted to use a salad dressing, what I would typically recommend is doing something like uh, this Tesemes because at least they're using high oleic sunflower oil versus something like this, which is flat out using vegetable oil, soybean and or canola, right? Sunflower is not the best stuff in the world, but it's a heck of a lot better than a lot of things. But I'd like to see if, this, if they have any primal kitchen, uh, in which case we will try to find that in a little bit. That's usually in the non-refrigerated section. With the veggies, it's a lot easier for us to get frozen, save some money. Uh, there are some things that I want to get fresh. Um, let's take a look real quick. But first, this cheese. Yeah, Asiago would be good. This is any aged hard cheese. So it looks like this is, hmm. Well, by the way, I found our goat cheese. Okay, so this is where the goat cheese would be. Um, the only one they have left is this cranberry cinnamon goat cheese. So you could get a nice bit of goat cheese for 250. If we had that in the mix, that's what we'd be getting, but they're all out of it right now. Um, between Parmesan and Asiago, really gonna be running into about the same situation. I like the taste of Asiago, so I'm gonna go with that today. Um, just to get myself some good high quality cheese. So I've got some aged Gouda and I've got some of that. Hey, check this out. I don't want to get ahead of myself. We'll find those in a different section, but kind of nice to see they have wisps here. Little snacks. It's nice to have little snacks now and then, but I want to make sure that I reevaluate my budget and where I'm at, and then I'll enjoy the snacks after I know I have the fundamentals. Looks like uh, we are not in a good spot as far as avocados are concerned right now. Bang for the buck right now. Oh, that's not bad though, 40 cents a pop. So let's say I would recommend that you eat, well, that would be a lot of avocados, but I have a lot of avocados. I usually have at least a quarter to a half of an avocado per day. So in this case, 40 cents, I would need at least 10 avocados, right? To like be able to get me through my, uh, my month, but I don't wanna buy avocados all at once because they're not gonna last me a month. So for principle, I'm going to get like five because I will absolutely go through that, okay? Let's see if there's anything else fresh we want to get here. Otherwise, I'm, I'm a big fan of getting a lot of stuff frozen. It's a pretty good price on just broccoli florets. $3, 23 cents an ounce. Get a couple of these. That way you can do some fresh steamed broccoli because the frozen stuff we will get a lot of uh, is going to be effective, but it's hard to steam it and get that good taste. You get some organic spinach would be great too. Okay, that's about five bucks. Again, these are California prices, but I would mix this into my eggs, everything like that. Do not eat spinach raw, okay? It will chelate, and that means it'll kind of make some of the minerals that you're consuming or getting in from other foods somewhat useless. One of the things I will spend a little bit of money on is some fresh rosemary, and this has to do with um, hispiduline, which is in rosemary, which activates what's called PPR alpha. Here, I'll walk and talk as we go but $2 for this because this will last me a whole month. Basically what it does is it helps activate gene expression so your body can utilize fats a little bit better the subsequent days, right? So if I were to make some Mediterranean dish with some fresh rosemary, that activates PPR alpha. Okay, that is again, gene expression that is going to allow my body to utilize more fats for fuel during the next day. So I would have a lot of rosemary with my chicken or with my fish the day before a fast, for instance, because it's gonna allow me to get more out of that fast. So usually I'll allocate a good, a, a few bucks on my budget, like 10 bucks, 15 bucks or so, towards things that I enjoy, like novelty items, like maybe some bars or something like that. And there's a lot of good keto options with your bars now. Um, normally what I go for at Walmart is something called Love Good Fats Bars. And it looks like they're sold out at this Walmart, which breaks my heart. So that means I'm not gonna be getting anything. So Love Good, good Fats Bars are a keto friendly bar that is absolutely delicious. They rival Quest, they rival all these other bars out there. And as far as the ingredient profile goes, they are absolutely what I would recommend. So if you're trying to choose all these different bars and all these different things out here, you, let me show you, for example, like Pure Protein, I'm not trying to throw a brand under the bus, but just let me show you, like first ingredient is maltitol and fractionated palm kernel oil. 
and palm oil. Okay, sugar. So Love Good Fats is all about trying to make it so that the world gets off of sugar. Okay, they are not out there to be a keto bar. They are out there to be a substitute for sugar. And Susie, who I know very, very well, who is the founder of that company, has done such a phenomenal job. So I'm disappointed that this Walmart doesn't have them, but they are absolutely a part of a budget haul for me. Because people look at bars and they think, oh, well, these are expensive. But this isn't something you should be eating three times a day. This is something that you give yourself as a treat or a meal replacement instead of a candy bar. And I used to be 300 pounds, so I definitely want these things all the time. Right? I want candy bars, I want that stuff. And sometimes I need to give myself a little bit of a substitute to make sure that I get through the day. So I highly recommend that you check out Love Good Fats. I'll put a link down below. That way, even if you don't have Walmart, you can get them online. And they're a big, big, big supporter of this channel. I have worked with Susie and Love Good Fats for the last like three years phenomenal group and if you've been a veteran on my channel then you know what a good product it is so huge huge shout out to them thank you for the support and there's a link down below so that you can get them and go to your local walmart and pick them up if you don't use that link down below because it is worth it so i kind of i would get a placeholder budget wise but there's nothing that i would even get otherwise uh, people ask about like the slim fast like keto stuff like that let me show you why this is not what you want okay so we have, first of all, whey protein concentrate, which I'm not a fan of. Okay, that's, you want whey protein isolate, but you don't want concentrate. Uh, then we have a bunch of natural flavors. We have erythritol, we have carrageenan. Uh, it's just not good, clean stuff, right? And there are ready to drink ones, even worse. Because then you have, let's see here. Where's, there we go. Okay, MCT milk protein concentrate, maltodextrin, cellulose gel it's just not what we want okay and then when you get into some of these like equate keto cups let's see here like sure they're fairly inexpensive but milk chocolate okay erythritol cacao liquor dry whole milk inulin ammonium phosphate eh, vanilla flavor that's fine oil blend palm coconut that's okay sodium caseinate not a fan of erythritol eh. uh, cocoa powder natural flavors Sunflower lecithin. So not the worst, but the things up towards the top, which are the heaviest ingredients, no good, okay? So they're all trying to knock off these various low carb things. And the thing I really, again, I like about Love Good Fats is they're not trying to push just a keto agenda. They're just all about good health. So anyway, there's a special link down below so that you can check them out. I could do a whole section on keto ice creams. Um, these enlightened and halo tops and stuff like that. I suggest you get yourself one or two like keto treats that you can have. Uh, that way you can you know live a little bit. So if you got like one thing of this keto ice cream and you made it last a month, well, that would be extremely impressive, first of all. Um, but just so you know, a lot of times people that are doing keto, they'll do a cheat meal and they'll have the keto ice cream because they'll think, oh, I'm having a cheat meal. Let me tell you, if you're going to have a cheat meal and you're coming off of ketosis anyway, go for the regular Halo Top or the regular Enlightened. The keto one is great but that's designed to have in small amounts while you're on keto. If you're having a cheat meal and you're coming off keto anyway, have this stuff because it's so much lower calorie. The keto kind, I'll just show you really quick. Let me show you an example of the keto one versus a non-keto one. It's still cleaner, cleaner ice cream. Okay, so four servings, 200 calories. So we got 800 calories in this, 800, okay? we have 330 calories in the whole container here. 300 versus 800. This is designed to be a keto treat. Do not have this on a cheat meal. Have it occasionally if you need to let your hair down while on keto. If you're having a cheat meal, go for the regular because you're already knocking yourself out of keto. Why have an extra 500 calories if you don't need it? So I'm gonna get myself one little treat. I like mint. I'm gonna get mint chocolate chunk. I'm gonna have one fourth of this once a week and that's going to be my cheat treat let's do a quick evaluation of where we are at cost wise just so i can kind of remember okay um we're at like 30 bucks here uh like 37 this is all rough right 37 5 10 that's 47 another 10 that's 57 um these were four so it's 57 to 61 65 i'm rounding up on everything uh, 65, 69, 69, 73, 77, 81, 
93, 98, 103, 108, 110, roughly $2.50, let's say 113, 118, 121, 123. And if I stick with this stuff, then we're at roughly ballpark 130-ish. So I have $70 left in my monthly budget. And look at this, I'm doing pretty good, right? I feel like I'm making good, good choices here and I have a lot of room. Okay, so roughly 130. I think I'm right. Uh, now I would love to get a little bit of heavy cream. Let's see here. It is kind of cool that they have this. Okay, heavy cream, non-fat milk, artificial flavor, sorbitan monastery, carrageenan, sucralose. So I'm not the biggest fan of sucralose. It's better than aspartame in my opinion, uh, but it's kind of cool they have a sugar-free whipped cream. So if you really, really, really were looking to just have a little fun, let your hair down, $1.88 for a keto-friendly whipped cream is kind of cool. I just don't think that it's necessarily clean keto, so I wouldn't really recommend it, especially when you have the option to do this. Go with heavy cream. Natural heavy cream. I don't know if it's really natural. Uh, no artificial hormones, that's all good. Locally sourced. Um, doesn't really mean anything. It's all kind of marketing propaganda. The point is, is that we don't have a lot of choices for heavy cream. Um, $3.24 for this. I don't see the price on the big one. Since this is really nothing special, it just claims to be natural heavy cream. This is natural too. So if I wanted heavy cream, I might as well just go for the cheaper one, $3.98 for great value heavy cream, okay? I'm not gonna do half and half because I'm not a fan of half and half because it's mostly milk sugar. So you have milk sugar, well not mostly, but half milk sugar, half heavy cream. Just go for the heavy cream and dilute it with almond milk if you wanted to. Uh, here's a cool thing though. Key two super creamer is now here. Um, they have a bunch of different labels, so I don't know where it is. I'm gonna guess it's this one, Sup Creamer Caramel. Let's see, let's see what's in this. Finally. I like the vanilla one. Let's see what's in this one. Again, I so, get so stoked that Walmart has this now. Purified water, cream, milk, uh, pro, milk protein isolate, uh, MCT oil, monk fruit, natural flavor, potassium. Okay, so it is a definitely a keto creamer and it is definitely bona fide keto. So just for the sake of having a little bit of fun on this whole thing, now I have some creamer. I could basically make myself a knockoff keto coffee, bulletproof coffee kind of thing and be off to the races. Um, is it necessary? Not really if we have the heavy cream, okay? So again, it's a tremendous keto find, but we're on a budget. So I just don't know if it's really worth it to get. I would rather get the heavy whipping cream because I feel like it's more universal. And in this case, you already have purified water and cream is a second ingredient anyway. So you might as well just go for heavy cream where you could actually whip it and make a topping and all kinds of stuff. Okay, let's get some Kerrygold butter too. Okay, we're at about 140-ish on our budget. I still wanna get some good omega-3s and some good quality fish in. Let's see what I can find here. Uh, I usually go for fish in the frozen section because it just makes sense. Um, doesn't look like the selection's amazing here. Definitely wanna avoid tilapia. I can get a great value on some shrimp. So let's do that. This is cool. Nice, some tuna steaks. Doesn't have a price and chances are it's gonna be, yeah. <laughs> yeah, seven bucks, not gonna get that. Let's go for some medium sized shrimp. Sure, not this guy's way here. Four servings. Yeah. Nice four meals with this. Let's go. Applegate, chicken and sage, breakfast sausage. Sage is also one of those um, herbs that has that hispiridine in it that I talked about. Ingredients, chicken. Wow, a little bit of cane sugar in it just because it makes it sweet, but only one gram of carb for three links. So nice little breakfast, but let's see here. 56 cents per ounce or 49 cents per ounce. And I can get a big bag of it. Chicken and maple, let's see the sugar content here. Okay, a little higher carb content. Uh, also has some maple syrup in it. This actually has natural maple flavor. You know what, the sage one is better. Get two of these. Those are surprisingly very clean. It's 
So we're probably, those are four bucks. We're at about 150, about $50 left in our budget here. These cauliflower uh, pizza crusts are great. You get two crusts in there. So at first you think, oh my gosh, $10 for two for a pizza crust, but you get two of them in there. So for $5, you get a pizza crust. Let me show you how clean these are. Check this out. Ingredients, fresh cauliflower, low moisture mozzarella cheese. That's it. And then egg whites. I mean, we're talking one, two, three ingredients. Three, ing three ingredients, I mean, super clean. So if you wanted to make a quick, easy keto pizza, I mean, it would be pretty awesome, right? Take a little bit of marinara, take a, <laughs> eat a little bit of that ground beef or some of those sausages you just got, you can make yourself a pizza. So even though it seems like it's a little bit over budget to spend $10 on this when we only have $50 left, what else am I really going to get, right? I need to get some frozen veggies. I need to get some snacks. We've filled up our cart with good, healthy, clean things. And that's what we're really after. So let's enjoy some food, right? So with this, you're not gonna eat a whole pizza. You're gonna make probably four meals out of this. So one night a week, you can have pizza night because you'll have half of this thing. I don't want you eating the whole thing because there's six, uh, a third of a crust is 90 calories. So you're probably looking at, you know, roughly what, 130-ish calories coming from the crust. I don't want you having a full crust. You could if you wanted to, but I want you having, so basically one night a week, you could have pizza night. So let's do it. That way we can live a little bit. I know there's other things we can go for here, but let me just show you, like call a power. Uh, definitely not good, right? They, they lie. <laughs> Cauliflower, brown rice, rice flour, cornstarch. It's not keto at all. This is a good brand if you're not keto, by the way. Just a shout out to them. They, they haven't paid me or anything like that. But the crust, cage free eggs, almond flour, arrowroot flour, cassava, coconut milk, very, very, very clean. Um, my son just loves these pizzas. So it's cool to know they have them here. I'm not gonna. Creamy cauliflower mac and cheese, brown rice macaroni. Never mind. That's why you have to be careful. See, cauliflower mac and cheese. And then I look at it and, oh, first ingredients, brown rice pasta. Definitely not keto. Now this is where we need to pay a little bit of attention. Okay, this is where I would recommend getting some rice cauliflower. Okay, get maybe, Yeah, actually, let's see, 21 cents. Yeah, it's actually cheaper to get a smaller bag. Or in this case, yeah, yeah, good thing I found this, right? For just a couple cents more per ounce, I can get organic cauliflower. So definitely wanna go for that route. So I will gladly spend $6 on getting some good rice cauliflower. Livens up any dish, mix it with a little bit of that grass-fed butter, mix it with a little bit of this sharp cheddar, you see, we can get creative with all this stuff. Uh, they also have these like veggie spirals. So check this out. A little bit pricey, but for $6, this is gonna last me a lot of meals. All this is is zucchini that's been spiraled up. $6 California prices, right? So if I wanted to get a smaller one, maybe let's do a small one this time. It's perfect. This will still be a good maybe two meals. So if I wanted to have spaghetti one night, I wanted to make some bolognese with my ground beef, right? Take a third of this or half of this, mix, God, this mask does not want to stay. I have a funny shaped face, everybody. It's just, everyone says, like, adjust your mask like this. It's tight on my face, okay? Like I feel like I have a, like a toddler taped to my face right now anyway, but then it just, it falls off. It's the shape of my nose, it's the shape of my chin, it's my Scandinavian and Italian features, okay? <laughs> anyway. So I'm gonna get this because I wanna make some bolognese. I wanna have some fun with this. By the way, comment down below if you wanna see me making recipes, budget recipes with this kind of stuff. I wanna see you commenting down below, but I need you engaged and I need to know, I need to hear it from you. So like all these kind of things, I wanna show you how to make budget meals because I'm a budget dad and I always try to stay on a budget no matter what, right? I don't care how famous I get on YouTube. I still wanna make stuff cheap because I don't like to spend money. I grew up, grew up broke, I wanna keep it that way. <laughs> or I keep living that way. I don't want to stay broke. <laughs> but anyway, moving on. Um, Brussels sprouts don't taste very good when you get them frozen, but they didn't have a big fresh selection here. Um, I'm a big fan of lots of broccoli. So I already got some fresh broccoli, but look at this, a buck. And if you are limited on time, 
and that's not the best thing in the world, but you can microwave it into that. So I'm just gonna get a couple of those. And we're probably getting close to maybe having like 25 bucks left now. Um, so let's go see if we can find some fun snacks. Some of these Dukes here. These Dukes aren't bad. Yeah, they're just expensive. You don't get many. Five bucks. So I put them in the, the maybe section. So it's kind of funny. If you look at like the great value snack sticks, like beef, pork, mechanically separated chicken, soy protein concentrate, corn syrup. Like what is in this stuff? But then you get over to like Dukes, which is pretty clean. And we've got, you know, pork, less than 2% of uh, salt, chopped parsley, cane sugar. I mean, yeah, there's a little bit of sugar. What about this though? Larissa's. Oh, here we go. I just don't see a price anywhere. Oh, here's, ooh, it's expensive. Yeah, because I see them down here, right here, man. That's for the spicy ones. So we've only got five sticks. The ingredients are great. Beef, water, sugar, because it does say they're made with 100% grass-fed beef, but that doesn't really mean a lot because it has to be grass-finished. So when we actually compare apples to apples here, if we disregard the fact that it's, okay, this is fresh, never frozen pork, so it's good quality pork. This claims to be good quality beef. If we were actually comparing apples to apples, beef, water, sugar, salt, mustard, cultured celery seed, garlic, natural flavors, rosemary, whereas this is just about equal. So bang for the buck, we're gonna get 89.6 cents per ounce versus $1.21. Let's get the Dukes. I've done a full video breaking down these pork rinds before. I'm just gonna cut right to the chase. It comes down to 4505 versus uh, the Crave brand, okay? So, oh, I'm sorry, sorry, not the Crave, the Epic, okay? So between the Epic and the 4505, uh, I'll just give you the quick breakdown of why it's important to look. Uh, they both use good quality meat, but I feel like 4505 takes the extra step towards higher quality pork. Um, these Epic ones are nice because they bake them, not fry them. So you end up with a lower calorie content, but it's pretty negligible. Okay, a half an ounce is 70 calories, half an ounce is 80 calories. Um, the taste on these is head and shoulders above Epic. So uh, in price, they're a little bit more expensive, but yeah, $1.60 per ounce versus $1.30 per ounce. So this would be a nice little treat. I usually like if I'm writing meal plans for people or anything like that, it's hard to think because there's five servings in here. There's a good, you know, you're probably gonna eat more than a serving. Um, let's just get one of these just to show that you can have snacks. I'm getting a little variety of snacks. Maybe you wanna get two bags of beef sticks. Maybe you wanna get two bags of pork rinds. You know, the thing is, I'm just trying to give you a variety here. Uh, max is a tremendous value, um, giving what you get it's just the pork quality isn't as high. So if I was trying to really be super budget, I would go for the Max because although there's some maltodextrin in some flavors, if you go for the Max original, look at how many you get here. You get 17 servings compared to five servings, okay? So bang for the buck, you should get this, but I really wanna focus since we have the budget to go higher quality, I went with these. I'm just being reasonable here and realistic. And let's see here. Now we've got the nuts, which I don't know if they have macadamia nuts here. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. And when they do, they're usually very expensive. Um, if we're gonna get roasted almonds or anything like that, we wanna get them roasted, dry roasted, not roasted in oil. Look at this, almonds, vegetable oil, almond, canola, safflower oil. So a halfway decent fatty acid in almonds ruined by how they're roasting it. Whereas dry roasted, in this case, 35 cents per ounce, 48 cents per ounce. So, so no, you're good. No. So we're also looking a lot cheaper on these too, okay? So cheaper, but also dry roasted. Almonds and sea salt, and that is it. So if you're gonna go for roasted, uh, you want dry roasted, you know, calorie wise, we can get some almonds and be in good shape. I was trying to see if they had any pecans here. But a lot of times you have to go to the baking section to find the pecans. They're usually not in the traditional section. Walnuts are good because they're high in omega-3s, but they're also high in omega-6s. So they kind of cancel each other out. Um, so to get your calories in, you know, people look at this and they'll say, there's no way that's gonna last someone a month. There's no way. Yes way, because we have 25 servings of 170 calories in here. Okay, all kinds of things. If you actually add up the calories and you're getting high quality fats in, you will meet 
1,800 to 2,500 calories with this easily. If I were to take all these foods and put them in a calorimeter and weigh it out and actually get the calories, we would have more than enough to get us through the month calorie-wise. Okay, we need to treat ourselves with a good degree of scarcity with how we look at our food and not just like think that it's abundant, right? So I think this is worth getting because it establishes the kind of things we should be getting. Uh, here's something I would definitely get. Coconut cream. Okay, so we got 338. Okay, this is going to be two tablespoons is six. Okay, 13 servings. You're not gonna be using this with every meal, but what I like to do is I'll take almond milk, I'll take something like that, and I'll mix a tablespoon or two of this into the almond milk and then heat it up and it makes a nice thick beverage and I can sweeten it, I can add some stevia, some monk fruit, uh, some cocoa powder, but also cook with this, okay? So in this case, a little bit on the pricey side, I can get this cheaper at other places. Uh, so we'll just get one can, because we're diversifying here. Uh, what I usually lean into, and I've done this before, is like Frank's Red Hot, super inexpensive and an amazing thing to sweeten or to flavor things with. So such a good value, $2.50, and I could add this to marinara, add it to whatever. Hey, way to go. Check this out, does he not have sugar added to it? Tomato puree, water, tomato paste, diced tomatoes, fire roasted diced tomatoes, tomato extra virgin olive oil. Way to go, Newman's Own. Wow. Okay, so it's olive oil, it's not vegetable oils, and there's no sugars added. Those sugars are naturally occurring in the tomato. You're gonna have that naturally in marinara. So that's five servings. You're not, okay, you're gonna have one serving of this, three of that's fibers, so that puts you down to eight grams of carbs. You're gonna be okay, all right? If you do this and you're keeping your carbs underneath 40-ish, 30-ish, 40-ish, you're gonna be fine. So I'm gonna get this because I talked about it so much. And yes, it may not be marinara, but I could absolutely make a pizza sauce with it. So it'd be totally fine there. And then, oh man, that's expensive. I love this Primal Kitchen mayonnaise. This is just, uh, that's just way too rich for my blood on this budget. So I might just have to skip the mayonnaise today. When given the option, I would prefer to have uh, macadamia nut butter. I would prefer to have coconut butter, things like that. But I understand, you know, what we have to choose from. Peanut butter is not gonna fly on keto. It's, it's keto friendly, but it's a legume and it's highly inflammatory and it's high omega-6 content. We're trying to kill, keep tilted towards those omega-3 profiles whenever we can, okay? So sunflower butter might be a little bit better than peanut because at least it's a seed, okay? Now, that's gonna be one that is pretty high in sugar, I believe. Yeah, yeah, the sugar's the second ingredient, so we're not gonna fly with this one. Almond would be the next best bet. Um, now, the nice thing is, calorie-wise, once again, if we look at this, creamy almond butter, Okay, 11 servings and we get 200 calories, almost 200 calories in each serving, okay? If you had to choose between cashew butter and almond butter, I would still choose almond butter because cashew butter is much richer in what's called phytic acid, which is very hard to get the nutrients and minerals out of cashew butter versus almond butter. Um, so five bucks seems like an expensive price and it kind of is, but again, how many calories we're actually getting out of this, it makes it so that our month is doable. So I'm gonna get this. Lastly, let's take a look at oils and sweeteners really quick. We're in the baking section, which is usually where we can find some good stuff. Let's see what we've got here. Um, we wanna find unrefined coconut oil. And in this case, we're not gonna need much. So let's, the nice, you know, things I talk about here, I say $200 per month, but the reality is that you, are gonna get something like this and it's gonna last you for probably a couple of months, right? You're not gonna go through this whole thing in a month, but we still have to look at it as if we're buying it on a monthly budget because this is how much money we have, right? It doesn't matter if it's gonna last us longer, we have what we have today. But as we look in advance next month, we may not have to spend as much because we got something like this, which is lasting us for a while. So organic unrefined coconut oil is $4.62. Okay, that's really a good price, 33 cents an ounce for coconut oil. You might look at this one and say, oh, it's cheaper, but this is refined. It's organic, but I don't really want the refined coconut oil. I want it in its full entirety. Um, this one's a little bit cheaper, 29.4 cents uh, for a slightly bigger one, but I just don't need to get that big of one right now. So let's get this one. And if we go a couple bucks over budget, we know that it's gonna roll over into next month. I usually get my sweeteners online. Like Amazon, you can just get a much better price than you can at Walmart. Um, Let's see, 
no calorie stevia. Yes, 80 servings. Uh, water, this one does have erythritol in it. Uh, what about the pure liquid? Okay, so if I had to choose between these two, I would probably go for the pure, just because it's going to be straight up water and stevia. That's it, really, and an organic alcohol to suspend it in. Much better bargain uh, as far as what you're getting, but if we're on a strict budget, 274 for this. But when you actually look at it, 274, 428, it's only a dollar fifty more, and we're getting a lot better of a, well, <laughs> check this out, okay? Wouldn't have caught this. 200 servings per container in this one, 80 servings in this one. You wanna know why? Because this one used erythritol, which I'm not opposed to, but erythritol is more like a one-to-one -one sweetener, right? It's equally sweet to sugar. It's actually a little less sweet than sugar. Whereas pure stevia is 200 times sweeter than sugar. So really interesting in that this one, you're going to get more of a sweetener value because this one has the erythritol in it, which is kind of weakening the sweetness. So I'm gonna get this and it's gonna last me twice as long. But I use this in my yogurt. I use this when I make any kind of like beverage, chocolate beverage, stuff like that. So yes, it's $4.28, but it's gonna last me a couple of months. So one of the things you can get uh, that you can use to cook with and things like this, and I'll just give you kind of a fun tip here, is psyllium. Like Metamucil is gonna be regular psyllium, but we want one that's like unsweetened, right? This one doesn't have, yeah, this we just want powdered psyllium husk. This is a pricey price for it, but literally one teaspoon and you're getting five grams of pure, or three grams of pure soluble fiber. Soluble fiber, in my opinion, is superior to insoluble. Okay, soluble fiber is what you get from chia, from flax, from psyllium, okay, from really good sources. Insoluble fiber is just indigestible, like cellulose, like plant walls, you know, cell walls of the plants that are just indigestible. Soluble fiber is what you want to aim for. So psyllium is a great thing to have on keto. A lot of people ask me about it, so I figured I'd mention it there. And if you're staying through the end of this video, then you're learning that, Jim. So let's go ahead and let's check out and see if we made our $200 budget. All right, so let's see where we end up. But I think I should be pretty close. I think I might be a hair over just with a couple other little novelty things that I got. Um, I ended up getting, I didn't put these back because I like my bacon too much and I like good quality extra sharp cheddar uh, mixed with my eggs and things like that. So that might put me a couple bucks over the $200 budget, but I think really we're sitting pretty darn close. And if I can do this, then you can do this, absolutely. So let's take, your, take our bets, okay? Go ahead and place your bet down below in the comment section on what price you think it's gonna be, okay? Just curious, curious what you guys think it's gonna be. I'm gonna guess, Two hundred and nine bucks at Walmart. We did it. All right. So remember. It would have been $200 almost exactly. I had the bacon and I had the cheese sitting up here and those were my extra items. And I said, if I go over budget, I could always put these back. Well, I didn't put them back because I thought I would be good. But had I put those back, we would have been square on the nose at 200 bucks. So Walmart is doing such a good job. I'm stoked that they're providing all these good, clean keto options now. It's not just the typical Walmart stuff you would think. And honestly, if we had spent more time and investigated further, we probably could have found even more stuff. So big on Walmart for making these changes and you can absolutely do clean keto and still have it taste good and still get some ice cream too for 200 bucks a month. See you tomorrow.